guys welcome back today i'm here with a video that you said you like to see this video will help you prepare for one of the exams in canada which will be useful on your resume if you're looking to enter into the banking industry and the course that i'll cover is cifc that is canadian investment funds course offered by ifse and i'll also answer one of the questions that was repeatedly asked after we published our previous video on bank job if you are new to the channel, my name is Tarun and if you want to move, get settled and succeed in Canada, then this is what our channel is all about. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and press the bell icon so that you can get alerts for all of our videos. And now, let's get started. Before I go into the details of CIFC, let me address the one question that a lot of you asked. Can I do the CIFC and or CSC course from India or my home country? The answer is yes, you can. But, 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 don't rush into it. The benefit of these courses on your resume can only be realized when you're already in Canada and you are also legally allowed to work. Based on these exams, you cannot expect to directly get a banking job in Canada while you are still in your home country. But now that you know about these courses, you can quickly decide what to do to increase your chances of getting a banking job when you arrive here. Unlike me, who was clueless for the entire first year in Canada. If you have a COPR or work permit and you're sure you want to enter into the banking industry, then it makes sense for you to enroll and start studying for these courses from your home country, be it CIFC or CSC, whichever you decide to do, and appear for the exam once you arrive in Canada. But do mind, usually you have one year to prepare and appear for these exams from the date of registration. But do check out the actual website for all the important dates and conditions before you register. We'll provide the links for these websites in the description box. All right, with that out of the way, now let us talk about what to expect in the CIFC course, how to prepare for this exam in the least amount of time, and then I'll also share some tips based on my personal experience that will help you to score better and pass the exam in your first attempt. Well, what is CIFC? It is a recognized proficiency exam for mutual fund representatives. Now you might wonder if it's for mutual fund dealers, how is it helpful in getting a bank job? There are two reasons. The first reason is, here in Canada, banks also sell investment products to their clients and one such investment product are mutual funds. So banks would like to get their employees to do a course such as CIFC so that they can get licensed and sell their products. The second major reason is this course will introduce you to the Canadian investment industry with a focus on retail clients you will be able to determine what investment products would be suitable based on a client's profile. You'll learn about the Canadian taxation system with a focus on taxes on investment income. You'll also learn about pension plans and certain special kind of savings account which are unique to Canada, such as TFSA and RSP. We actually already have a video about these accounts and banking in Canada in general, which you can watch on our channel. So you learn about all these basics in the CIFC course. Don't you think if you have this knowledge about the Canadian banking industry, you'll be able to do well in an entry-level job opening in a bank? Additionally, hiring managers will likely prefer a candidate who already has this knowledge. The next question is, how is the exam? The exam is pretty simple. You just have to answer 100 multiple choice questions within three hours, and you just need 60 of them to be correct to pass the exam. Now the next question is, where will you get the study material and do you need to buy any extra study material? Well, you'll get the study material when you register at, on the IFSE website and most of that material is available online. At the end of each unit, you'll get practice exams as well and you can download a PDF file of the course material itself. In addition to that, while you're registering, you'll see that you can buy some additional course material. I would say you don't need that. I didn't buy it and still pass the exam with very good marks. Just make sure that you finish all the practice questions and revisit the topics that you got wrong so that you can make sure that you understand everything. Now, what does the study program look like? Let me show you a screenshot because I'm only human and I cannot memorize it all. 
So there are 11 units in this course and each unit has about four to five lessons. So in total, there are 44 lessons. But don't worry, these lessons are only about on an average five pages long. So you'll be through with the chapters really soon. Another question that you guys often ask was how long does it take to prepare for this exam? I would say if you are solely focused on studying for this exam, you'll be done with the preparation in just one month. But if you're also working on something else and you can only devote like one to two hours per day, then you can expect to prepare for this exam within three months. Now, when will you know that you are ready for the exam? Well, everybody is different and you should take your time and appear for the exam when you feel you are ready. I would say if you are able to score 80 to 90% in your practice exam, then you are ready. This is a good guideline because marks do tend to fall during the real exam due to exam pressure. Now the most important thing, how should you prepare for this exam? The key to prepare for this exam in the least amount of time is to do anything but don't start with unit one because it's all about the regulatory environment in the banking industry in Canada and you'll easily get bored and overwhelmed. This involves, this unit involves a lot of memorization so leave it for the end. Instead, start with the chapters that interest you and this will keep you motivated. Another strategy that I followed was I looked at the weightage of each of the units and then I tried to focus on the units that had more weightage. I grouped together the units that had similar or connecting topics and then finished them off first. I started with unit 2 and 3 because these were the easiest. Most of the concepts were obvious and easy to understand such as compliance measures, code of conduct, ethics and procedures to follow for KYC that is know your client and in addition to that there was how to profile the client and how to determine what would be the suitable investments for a client. So all in all I was easily done with these two units and with this I was completed with 20% of the course. Now that you are done with unit 2 and 3 and you are starting to enjoy the course, look at unit 5 to unit 8. This is all about mutual funds and other investment products such as bonds, stocks, etc. This whole uh, 4 units will take you a bit of a time to cover but once you are done with these units, you are almost done with 40% of the course already. Now the next interesting topics are in unit 9 and 10 which is all about registered accounts such as RRSP and TFSA, who can open these accounts, how much can one contribute in this account and what are the benefits of these accounts. In addition to that, in these units you learn about how income is taxed in Canada, especially income generated from investment products. Now that you are done with unit 2 and 3 and unit 5 to 10, you are done with almost 80% of the course. And this would be the right time to start with the last unit, which is unit 11, because it, it builds upon what you have already studied and that is why it's fairly easy to finish. Next complete unit 4, which includes concepts from economics, such as fiscal and monetary policy, supply and demand of investment products and business cycle, etc. If you have a background from economics or finance, you'll easily breeze over this unit. But if you find yourself struggling with any of the topics, just search them on YouTube and you'll easily find videos on these topics, which will help you understand the concepts better. And if you still find yourself struggling, don't stress too much about it because this unit weighs just about 6%. And then finally, try to memorize unit 1 as best as you can and then you are all done with the course. Now, what are the strategies to score better in the exam? One of them is time management. Even though you have 3 hours to finish 100 questions, think like that you have 2 and a half hours and try to finish 10 questions in each 15 minutes of slot. This way you'll have plenty of time left over in the end to revisit the questions that you left or you had doubts on. Next is there is no negative marking in this exam so make sure that you don't leave any question unanswered. Most of the times there are 4 options but among those 4 options only 2 are the main contenders. So if you are able to make a guess you are still have a 50-50% chance of being correct. And in addition to that, make sure that you read all of the questions carefully at least twice. This way you'll be able to understand the question and answer it correctly. Let us look at an example. Jack and Jill won a lottery of $300,000 in cash. They have come to you for advice. They want to take this money and use it to retire early. What will you say? Option A, ask them to sign the forms so you can invest their money right away. Option B, 
ask them questions related to a mutual fund you sell to see if they qualify to invest. Option C, ask them to follow your advice and tell them if they do, they'll definitely retire early with their money. Option D, ask them questions about their financial situation such as assets and liabilities so that you can recommend an investment strategy that will meet their needs. The correct answer is option D. But this is an easy question. You'll also get questions based on calculations, so make sure that you practice everything thoroughly. Now the last but a very important tip. As soon as you get the question booklet, write down notes on it about the important concepts. For example, here is a simple table about differences between regular accounts, that is non-registered accounts, and registered accounts such as RRSP and TFSA, which get special tax treatment. Here you will see how is tax applied when money is put into different accounts when return such as interest, dividend, etc. is earned and when money is taken from different accounts. Such notes will help you answer questions quickly and accurately during your exam. So that's it folks, these were all the tips that I had for you today and if you found this video helpful then do give this video a like and I'll see you in our next video. Till then, take care and stay safe.